Bertha Ogie was that it had been the antithesis of a concentration camp. No rules, no bureaucracy, free to people, free to come, free to go. Is that possible? I would think that is just how I could envisage it, since you put it to me. In fact, some remarks that I heard the boys make at one time or another, I mean, Sebastian and Matthias, um, that the most weird people arrived and uh, were received and allowed to stay, observe, whatever, and, and, and some very eminent people too. And uh, whether, you know, it produced a lot of problems, I don't know, because they did have uh, something of a structure, I think. Mm. They had meals and uh, conferences, I imagine. But otherwise, yes, my impression is that it was a sort of quite unstructured thing. I mean, I wonder if the problem that John Thompson would have had with that enterprise and and trying to restart it in this country is the something that is too formless can't be maintained because it needs um, needs the commitment of some individuals who do some of the basic tasks and and they can't do them without uh, you know regular meal times for instance or somewhat regular meal times um, but no I mean I don't, I don't see why that should get in the way of the the less the less structured thing, which perhaps is what John valued about it so much. I mean, some people would think, oh, it's a bit of an indulgence, I suppose. You know, if you don't have form and order, you don't achieve anything. There is no art without effort and um, discipline, and that is in Catholic spiritual life, I suppose, is a rule that, um, you know, in fact, people accepted as spiritual guides, masters, have undergone um, some discipline, self-discipline. I mean, religious orders depend very much on exactly that kind of formation, that you surrender your own... <laughs> will or lack of will, <laughs> so that you're given the will <laughs> to yeah. do and that the people who you accept know more than you are turning you into a more finished human being or developed soul or capable person, mm. monk, nun, whatever. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, surely in all crafts and, I mean, talking of medicine and healing, um, its, its expertise is required by a fair amount of hard graft and study, isn't it? But Aviv was a, a spiritual community, not a therapeutic one. Or well, was it therapeutic for the therapy for the spirit? <laughs> yes, I should say probably it was to achieve therapy by using spiritual means. Um, that's getting quite etymological, isn't it? So, meditation, communal, and there was a chapel? I think there was. Of course, Mary Odette, Mary Odette, with her French background, her family there, might have had a chance to re-examine or have met people who were involved. But I have once or twice met people, I think, who, who had heard of it, and for some reason, I never closely sort of questioned them and said, were you there, or did you ever know John Thompson, or how did you come across it? I mean, a certain amount of news often uh, got about. And it was a, a chateau with land. I think it was. I think it had a sort of walled impression. Um, when Sebastian and I went there, I think he had to collect the key from a old lady in the village who was sort of acting as a semi-caretaker. But have you met this chap, Jean Vanier? 
<laughs> I'm sort of hoping to, he's incredibly, he runs this organization called uh, LASH, which is a worldwide organization and he's always traveling somewhere, but um, I, he's agreed to let me sort of, I could say it, to sort of find a window in his schedule. Yes, I imagine he's a bit like um, Leonard Cheshire was at one time, so committed that he was always going to some meeting or to raise money mm. or to see a new mm. place that had opened yeah. running properly, yeah. dashing around. But Oviv didn't involve, it didn't involve any um, agricultural work. Well, whether they had gardens or something there, do you know, I don't think I ever discovered. I was just saying that John had very much this interest in uh, sort of, I think, therapy connected with this, um, what came from this uh, Catholic worker thing, yeah. cult culture, cultivation. Um, but that was transposed then to New York by Dorothy Day. <laughs> so, because the, well, the, it seems the, again, uh, uh, I could say the antithesis. Of, but she was already yeah. doing her thing before ever she knew of John Thompson. Yeah. And uh, this chap who was a great mentor of hers, Peter Mohan, mm. um, Maureen, his, some of his works, I had, I had a book. Oh. And you, have you ever read anything about Dorothy Day? Because I, she wrote yeah. an autobiography, which John mm -hmm. put me on to, called The Long Loneliness. And I had a copy, whether I could find it. Well, it was Soissy, Yes, yes, yes absolutely, good. yes. Um, that right. was a card from Sebastian yes. in Canada at Christmas. Whether that'll give you any leads. No, but it would be rather nice to see a picture of him. Um, but you made the remark that his sort of polarity was very much set by John Thompson. Do you know, I can recollect now that he actually used phrases and expressions and thoughts that come from what I remember of John. For instance, here he says, you know, for 1975, we wish you good health and there's a word missing, or oh, it's got smudged, and plentiful means of grace. Yes, um, I can't be more specific, but there are sort of echoes of the thoughts and ways mm. of expression sometimes. I noticed in, in both of them, particularly Sebastian, Matthias was rather more, um, in a way, more detached. I remember him giving an amusing account of how when he went over to see John, and he was in a very, you know, he was in a, I think, in this acutely depressed state. Um, he said he had sat in on one of John's um, and, and some of the other staff of the hospital, a sort of seminar, and um, he, he said something rather irreverently, irreverent, like they, 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 were, they were like a lot of theologians <laughs> discussing sort of principles mm. um, and uh, I, did he even say something made one feel he, he was sort of criticizing it as a, as mm. a sort of almost a unreal kind of uh, frame of belief. Um, mm. Was that a psychiatric seminar? Or I suppose from this Albert Einstein hospital. Or, ah yes yes well it would have been. I thought this was um, you know, I must ask, I'm in touch with one of the younger doctors from the hospital. Does it draw people from all over the world, or are they all Americans? Or? The Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein is a very interesting creation. It was a, um, a Jewish medical um, faculty. Um, it was actually the university, it's associated, I think, with the Yeshiva University, a very orthodox Jewish in New um, York. In New York. But they set up the medical college. The doctors were rather more, one detached it rather, so that 
it was Jewish but not doc, but not doctrinaire, and yeah. so that you would have. I mean, it was open to anyone from any denominational background to be yes. a student there, yes. and of course, patients were. Uh, were all sorts and had a link to the state hospitals and so on. But um, so that it was a very, I can say, eclectic sort of mixture. But, and the psychiatry there, Milton Rosenbaum, he is a very non doctrinaire psychiatrist, a bit of psychotherapy, a bit of, um, I can say, um, neurosurgery. Um, it, he just had everything, he wanted everything going on. And he said, well, he, he thought that John Thompson would be great just to have as a, a presence with the students and just, as he says, someone to have around. And he knew that he would be very, um, a sort of an excellent student mentor and also um, with these patients who were cases who were um, very difficult cases. It's the thing that is found a special thing. And then there were these seminars on hallucinations, which is, for these psychiatrists, some are very academic and sort of, you know, they want to make their go ahead, you know, they want to make their careers in academic psychiatry and so on. And others were more relaxed and of course they've got different groupings and psychiatry is very sort of, I can say, it is like a, a lot of different theological positions. <laughs> the nature of mind, the nature of... So that, um, I, yes, I could understand that. I have a tran some transcripts, though. Oh, I can't remember the student's name, who was, again, very much devoted to mm. John. And he himself, uh, he went a few years ago to OV, to have a look. From and America? Came yes, in yes, look. yes. Mm. He, spent, he, was, he spent some time in Paris, but it was um, uh, one of his ideas. And he says, today, there is a psychiatric hospital there, but there is no sense of what was there previously. And so that he talked to the director of the hospital, and it's called Ovid, so there must be some <laughs> continuity, yes, but yes, it is... Yes. Yes. It's been forgotten. Yes. I mean, it's a very sort of basic concept, isn't yeah. it? Water of life. Mm. Oh, that, uh, that's cool. Um, but I just never got very involved in John's, you know, specific medical knowledge, work. I simply accepted the fact that he was, you know, a skillful practitioner of mind type medicine mm. and uh, he he obviously there were people who became very dependent on him and this person who Jilly mentioned who admired him tremendously in Oxford Doris wasn't it dear yeah, Doris Layard Layard presumably there are people still about who remember him um, and she died somewhere, I would say, while we were at Obridza, because I remember yes. thinking I ought to make the effort to go to her requiem. It was held at the Dominican Church. Is it Stamford Hill? Or... The place Lawrence Bright stayed at for a while. And I always remember going to pick him up there to come and have a visit with my mother. And we had quite religious orders, order of preachers. Some reference books. I find it hard to quite... I'm not experienced enough yet to find my way about. But um, anyway, she had a husband who I recall had been an academic expert in Anglo-Saxon or linguistics I just can't remember. Um, and he I think had taught at Oxford. So she, she was, sorry, she was a psychiatrist? No? I'm sure she was. Well, she was. was she a psychotherapist? There's a difference isn't there? Yes, yes of course. At the Warnford, didn't she? Uh, 
Because, I mean, you got in touch with her. I got in touch with her. Why did I get in touch with her? Um, she known John Thompson, presumably. Yeah, she had. That right. was that. But, yes, it was when I was living with you at Oxford, which was what? Was, it, was I there for 18 months or in a year before we came back down here? Southampton Road, London Northwest 5, it's up in that direction. Yes, Southampton Road. Um, anyway, I never got there. Yes. Um, I remember going to see her in her house. It's one of these nice big sort of North Oxfordish kind of houses with a garden. And there was a chap who she introduced me to very briefly, who was, had been a monk, whether he'd been a priest, I don't know, and who'd got married and she um, was sort of jollying him along and uh, whether that's significant, I can't remember. Um, I suspect she was a slightly unorthodox Catholic. Mm. Would you say so? I don't, I don't know. No, I your I, mother, mother knew them slightly or knew her, know. yes. So, that hasn't got us anywhere. Um, oh, I tell you who... I remember a, a Catholic priest who John liked, an Englishman, who I met when John was staying in some sort of boarding house or not at his little flat at Little Clarendon Street. And he was the one of the um, people in charge of Ashore College at Durham, which used to be a Catholic mm -hmm. seminary. I believe it's since closed. Gerard Culkin, and he was in Oxford to do some historical research, I think, at the, at the library. And John introduced us, and it was a year or two later when I was on my way down from Glasgow. I stopped there and was given a lunch by this priest and shown round the college and shown the cathedral and was very very nice and he came he was very much that part of the world and he wrote a rather popular sort of history of the reformation i think which i did read but um that's a bit bad by but john had a great ability okay. on a personal level to relate and meet people mm. i think when he criticized power mad, sex mad clerics. It was a sort of general thing. When he actually got to know a particular cleric, I think he would be, you know, friendly and full of oh, I see. it was a general right, right, okay. It was a general criticism. Yes. It was not directed at any specific right. But I think what he really was feeling was that, you know, conventional sort of mm. Puritan Catholicism um, had lost, you know, the 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 sense of values about, um, you know, power structures are in fact inimical to the word of Christ, and obsession with sexuality is a distortion of reality, mm. <laughs> and um, he probably found the French Church in some ways more sympathetic, more relaxed mm. than he did, I mean, talking of the Catholic Church in France and the Catholic Church in England. Mm. Uh, he, he had some good friends. He loved Mount St. Bernard's. He had these two very close Dominican friends. And uh, I don't know whether he communicated with them much after he left Oxford. Elred Squire would have gone to America after John had died, I think. So he, he wouldn't have met him. Um, really interesting. I mean, I'm very grateful. I think it's sort of... I would find it not too easy to talk about... Um, oh, well, 40 years ago, isn't it? 30 <laughs> yes, well, I, I get worried that, that mm. things have sort of... Thank you. ...slipped out of... <laughs> reality more into a sort of rather subjective 
interpretation.